Hello lovely friends, here's a sneak peek of today's beautiful seahorse. Oh what a challenge. Thank you so much to our lovely and special guest today, Michael from Michael's Making Art. Kim and I were so delighted to have this challenge of this naughty little seahorse and this sea creature I can't challenge. wait to see what these beauties have come up with today. So I'm using the micro swipe technique today. So here's my colour palette. I really wanted to have blue and use one of my favourite time colours at the moment, which is that fluorescent yellow. So let's see how he comes out. Just before I painted, I used a stencil from that sort of sticky taped um, vinyl that you can get to, to cordon off the part of the canvas that I didn't want paint to get onto. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm just now free to paint the rest of the canvas. So I'm using some really beautiful colours today. I've got my dark black blue, which is my favourite colour at the moment. You should see this shimmer. If you've used it yourself, when you see it in the tube, you just think, oh, that looks quite dark, I'm not sure. And then when you start to look closely and when you actually have it on canvas, it has the biggest sparkle and it takes that sparkle all the way through. So I'm layering up all my blues. I wanted like a purpley dark blue, which is that black blue. I've then got my green blue and my blue green. I'll put all the colours in the description at the end. And then I've just put in my base paint down now. So it flows with the swipe. I'm going to do a beautiful little micro swipe with this one. The reason I'm putting my base paint down now is I'm trying to gauge how much of the colour I want to bring out into the base um, with the white and how much I want to blend from the blue and through the gold and the fluorescent yellow into the white. So some green will be appearing. Now everything I do tends to be nature inspired and when this challenge came up and knowing that one of my happy places is being in the sea and by the sea I just thought I'd love to do a seahorse. So I'm adding the yellow and the gold here now just to swipe through for my first micro swipe. Um, I'll tell you in a second a little story about a seahorse that I found when I was little. But just for now, I'm using my kitchen towel cut into very small strips and you can see I'm swiping all the way through from the blue all the way to as far as the paint will go to the edge of the canvas and don't worry about stopping because some people want to stop and think oh, I don't want to do it there but if you allow the swipe to continue all the way to the edge of the canvas the paint will naturally run out um, and then you'll have that natural flow because there are cells in this one because I've added silicon I added seven drops of silicon in total to all of the colours, so I've added one or two to each of the paints, which is something I did because I wanted to create that cell feeling, that sort of look of um, the sea of bubbles. Um, and also, if you look closely at seahorses, they tend to have that very scaly appearance to their skin. So I'm intuitively using each swipe mostly just straight out from the edge to the edge of the canvas but in the head one or two of the swipes I crossed over because I wanted to form an eye and luckily an eye formed in the right spot that was the spot that I really wanted to have it in but to be honest there's so many cells here you could probably choose one of the cells and make them into an eye later and all of the swipes tend to go in the same direction so then the body is naturally forming and I'll show you the tail in a minute as well and what I do with that I did this part of the tail it's almost like a little stump and as I swipe the tail I did it in the same sort of just going off in a direction going carefully around the corner and then in a minute I'm going to then take off the stencil and I'm going to paint in the tail and because it's only a little bit of the tail I'm going to give it a slightly different look to the rest of the body so I'm looking at the colours now and I'm thinking oh I can see the blue 
Ah, the iridescence of the blues coming through and that beautiful shimmer with the gold and the yellow. Really, really beautiful. And the ultramarine blues coming through as well. And you put a tiny bit of that in, but it's coming through nicely. And I'm just beginning to see how the body of the seahorse is forming. So, little story about when I was little. I was about five or six and I had my bucket at the beach and I found a baby seahorse. I was so excited. I took it in my bucket all the way back home, or so I thought. I got to the car and it had splashed out into the pavement and it wasn't in there. I was so sad. <laughs> but I had that memory for life in that I was so excited about finding a sea creature. Of course, if I found a sea creature now, I wouldn't take it home. I would put it, put it back in the sea. Um, I can't remember if I told my mum and dad <laughs> if I'd had one or not. But that's my little story. And I've always thought of them fondly. They're such amazing creatures. And apparently one of our beautiful friends, Donna, from It's Art by Donna, used to keep seahorses. Oh my goodness. I was doing a bit of research, as I always do when I'm doing something new. Um, or something I'm not sure of or haven't looked at for a while. And I found out some really interesting facts about seahorses. Did you know that the males actually give birth and the female fertilises the male? I was watching a male give birth on a YouTube channel recently <laughs> and they shoot the babies out when they're ready to give birth. It's the cutest thing. Um, they also are very tiny, especially the pygmy seahorse, which is the size of your little finger. Really, really tiny. And they are tiny but mighty, so they can grab hold of things with their tiny little dorsal tail. They also are the slowest swimmers in the sea, um, wagging their tails about 35 times a second when they're moving. And also they're chameleons, so they can change colour to fit in with their surroundings. They are amazing creatures and I can't wait to learn more about them. So back to the tail, I'm just using my pencil to do a bit of a twirl and forming my tail and I'm sort of rubbing out what I don't want. And then I use my paintbrush and I'm just filling in any of the gaps with my beautiful shimmery black blue. And I'm just using a bit of paint to colour in. So I'll come back towards the end as this seahorse comes to life. And you'll see as I take the stencil off, I start to do little bits of something exciting with some spray paint.
can't resist a bit of spray paint today, especially as I've got this beautiful yellow, which is very complimentary to the first thing. just to give it a bit of a dotting, um, blending in the green and the yellow. So if you look very closely, it's almost got a tiny shimmer of rainbow just in front of the seahorse by its belly. And I'm using my curved piece of canvas to put the light, which is filling in the gaps around the seahorse, but not too much. So it's like a bit of white aura around it. So I want to say thank you so much today to the wonderful Michael for joining us. Let's go and see what he's created. And thank you, as always, to my dear friend Kim for being here on this collab. I love these collabs with you, such a joy. Let's go and see what Kim has created. I'll put the links to both videos in the description below. Don't forget, your art is a piece of you. Thank you for being here, and I hope to see you again soon. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you.